Hey guys, so something just a little bit different today. I'm just coming to you here from my dining room with the brand new Nintendo Switch Lite, as you can see here. I just bought this. This is not a promotional deal. I'm not uh, reviewing a review unit. Nintendo didn't send me this. I purchased it myself. And I just kind of wanted to unbox it and uh, do a little bit of a impressions, I guess. It's just gonna be a few hours of use, um, but I'll give you my impressions and yeah, we'll see how it is. Uh, I do have an original Switch, and I'll explain a little bit why I bought this in addition to that as the video goes along. Those of you who have watched my channel for a while, you know, you probably know that I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Nintendo. I've been following them since the beginning. Uh, the first memory that I have of them is of playing the, uh, the Game & Watch, which one of my older friends brought over to my house one day, and I got hooked on those. Uh, of course, I played all the arcade games, Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Jr. My favorite arcade game for a long time was Versus Tennis, which of course morphed into Mario Tennis. And I've been buying their consoles and their handhelds ever since. I have all of them, including the original Nintendo TV Game 6, which I did a video on here a little while ago. Nevertheless, every time I, uh, I do a video on Nintendo, my uh, comment section kind of goes wild with the fanboys. So. Just a word of warning, I will be moderating my comments as I always do. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's just take a look at this thing. Now keep in mind, this is not going to be as in-depth as uh, some of the other videos out there that are doing actual reviews, although some of those reviews are a little bit suspect as uh, you don't know where those units came from, especially if they came before release day. So. Uh, let's just take a quick look at this box. Of course, we've got a picture of the unit itself on the front. It's a small box, which gives me hope that it's going to be a little smaller than it looks in most of the pictures and videos that I've already seen. Uh, on the sides, we've just got some pictures of it uh, in use there. Big Nintendo logo, there you go, on one side. And uh, on the back here, we've got the back of the system, which is kind of cool. We've got the uh, front on the front and the back on the back. Logical. Anyway, let's open this thing up. And comes packed in cardboard, which is uh, environmentally friendly, of course. And here is the unit itself right on top. And that's it. Now here's the uh, Switch Lite compared with the original Switch. You can see that the size difference is actually not that huge. Um, the Switch, I've always thought was too big for a handheld. There's too many compromises to use it as a handheld. It's, you know, back in, I guess, the early 90s or so, we had the Atari Lynx, Sega Game Gear, and others like that. and they failed in the market in part because they were really about as big as the Switch. Um, the Switch, to me, is not a good handheld. You, you can't just throw it in a bag. You obviously can't pocket it. And it's a little bit heavy and kind of fragile with the attached Joy-Cons. It does kind of creak a little bit as you move it around. Uh, you probably can't hear that on camera. So, you know... A dedicated handheld version of the Switch, I think, is a really good idea. And uh, I was kind of excited when they announced it. I was hoping for much better battery life and a much smaller unit. The Switch Lite, it is smaller, as you can see. It's obviously smaller, but it's really not that much smaller. Um, in the hand, you know, it's... Obviously, I have large hands, and I can get my hand around it. There's no problem there but you know just it's still quite large for a handheld in fact let me just grab a couple other recent handhelds and, and compare it okay so again here's the uh, I almost just said 3ds light no here is the switch light here's a Sony PSP now this was considered a large handheld at the time and here it is compared to a PS Vita 
The PS Vita I always thought of as probably about the biggest I'd want a handheld to be. And you see the uh, switch light is somewhat bigger than that. Here it is uh, for more direct comparison. This is a 3DS. Uh, now this is, this is a new 3DS. It is not a 3DS XL. It is actually, yeah, <laughs> thought I had it upside down for a second. Uh, this, is, this is the standard 3DS. Now open, obviously it's taller vertically, but if you wanna carry it in your pocket, you can, you certainly can. It's protected and it's smaller and it doesn't have bits sticking out. So, you know, this to me is kind of the ideal size for a handheld. Uh, and just for shits and giggles, I guess, here's the original Game Boy. Of course, you'd, you'd hold it like this. Uh, it's thicker, obviously, but, you know, less total length, I guess. And I know I said recent, but I brought it up, so here's the Atari Lynx. <laughs> now, obviously, again, the Atari Lynx is thicker, but the, uh, the Switch light is really about the same width. It's not much different. And this thing was massive at the time. It was considered huge. Um, so I still, I think the Switch light is a little bit, too big for a handheld. Um, I'm hoping that they'll revise this over time as Nintendo always does. They never only ever release one iteration of a system. Uh, you know, we got the Game Boy Micro, for example. We got the Game Boy Light. We got the Game Boy Color. We got all sorts of different Game Boys at the time. We got the, uh, the 3DS, the uh, new 3DS, the 3DS XL. So, they do different things with sizes, form factors, and whatnot. Um, and I am hoping that this is not the last Switch light that they make, that they make one that's even smaller and uh, maybe with some kind of clamshell design. Now, I do know that they have a, a pretty cool case in Japan, uh, official case that actually basically turns it into a clamshell, which is really cool. And I'd love to import one of those, but just haven't done it yet. But anyway, uh, let me connect this to power if I need to and try out some games and I'll be back in a little bit and give you my impressions after playing the system for a while. Before I even do that though, I know some of you are probably wondering what else is in this box and you do get a real power brick with it. And yes, it is, it's a brick. Uh, so it's not some kind of bullshit USB charging cable, but on the other hand, it is, quite a uh, large power brick for a handheld system. And then you just get some basic warranty information and blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much it. So I'm back here with some gameplay impressions and also some general impressions of the system itself. As you can see, I've got Bayonetta 2 running on the Switch Lite here, Bayonetta 1 running on the Switch. And uh, that's, I guess, kind of to show well, I couldn't run them both at the same time. Uh, I only have one game card and, uh, you know, Bayonetta 1 is a download and I did re-download it. Uh, it's actually downloading right now onto the Switch Lite, um, but I don't think I can play them at the same time, but whatever, that's not the point. The point is, yes, I've linked up my account. I've got all my save games downloaded. I'm re-downloading the same games that I had downloaded on my original Switch. You can use them both simultaneously. Uh, you don't have to transfer one account to the other and lose everything on the original Switch. Basically, you can have two different Switches that you use simultaneously. Nintendo does allow that. Um, as far as the system in use, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, the original Switch is pretty cool, so, you know, why wouldn't this be? It's pretty much the same thing, just slightly smaller. Obviously, you know, this is a huge deal to some people that it has an actual D-pad. It is more comfortable to use if you use a D-pad. I mean, most of the games that I play don't really require a D-pad, and uh, the ones that support it, like Bayonetta, Bayonetta does support the D-pad, but I, I use the, um, 
thumbstick because it's easier. So like to me, it's not a huge deal, but to some people it is. And yeah, this is a standard. It feels like a regular Nintendo thumb pad like you'd get on a Super Nintendo controller. I mean, it's like every other Nintendo thumb pad they've ever made. Uh, brightness of the screen is fine. I mean, I'm not the kind of person that notices like tiny variations in stuff like that. If we go back to the home screen, well, okay, let's put the original switch back on light mode real quick. So interestingly enough, I mean, this is with both systems on max brightness and it's definitely more dramatic on camera. Um, and part of it's just the angle. Let's see if I can, but I mean, that's probably pretty close to what the difference actually looks like in real life. The switch light is brighter if you want it to be brighter. And that makes sense to me because it is intended as a dedicated handheld. So they're going to brighten up the screen a bit so that you can see it outside. Um, this, I've never had a problem with the brightness of the original switch, but again, I don't use it as a handheld much outside because the battery life is so poor. It's so big and I just don't like using it that way, but you know, this is made for that. So it's got a brighter screen and you're going to use it outdoors and it's going to be more comfortable to use it outdoors. And you know, the controls, they feel a little uh, more handheld ish than the original switches controls. Original switch has buttons and controls that I really like, but they're very, very clicky and kind of snappy and also somewhat loose feeling. Uh, everything about the system from the day I bought it just felt kind of loose. Whereas this switch light, everything feels very tight, very much like uh, any other Nintendo handheld system that you would have ever had. Now, how is it playing on this slightly smaller screen? Well, I mean, <laughs> It's like playing on a slightly smaller screen. It's really not that different. Um, Bayonetta has always been a game that's a little difficult to play on even the small screen of the original Switch. That's part of why I'm showing it here, just to show you kind of what it looks like on an even smaller screen. But it's perfectly playable. And, you know, I, I, I feel like, whoops. <laughs> That's what I get for playing and talking at the same time. I feel like after after playing this for, you know, 20 minutes, you'd be entirely used to it and wouldn't even notice the difference between the screen size uh, between the original Switch and the Switch Lite. So, yeah. This is a really great game, by the way, and everybody should own it. Now, lastly, there are some people out there that are actually complaining about this system, you know, for reasons other than what I'm complaining about it for. Of course, my complaints are valid, but uh, no, I mean, there are people who are complaining about its existence at all and the fact that it doesn't have an HDMI output and it doesn't have detachable controllers, which is what makes a switch a switch, of course. But I feel like those people are basically just looking for a price drop on the original switch. That's not what this is. This is a handheld. It's $200. It's intended as a handheld. It's basically Nintendo's replacement for the DS. Um, and as that, I think it's pretty good. Um, it's durable. It plays Switch games, which are a lot of them are great. Um, it's powerful. It's obviously the most powerful handheld ever made. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. I do wish it was a little smaller. Um, I think that might have kind of helped with this sort of identity crisis that I guess some people say the system has. I don't think it has an identity crisis. I just think it's too big. But I not I don't care at all about the fact that it doesn't have TV output. I don't care that it doesn't have detachable controllers. That's what the original Switch is for. And the original Switch is still on the market. If that's what you want, go buy it. You know, it's $100 more. And, you know, you get what you pay for. If you want those extra features, that's what you're paying for. But 
Uh, I think this is a pretty good little device and I'm sure I'm gonna use it. And it does kind of feel like something you can throw around a little more easily than the original Switch, which I feel more comfortable just leaving in a dock. It's, uh, it's <laughs> this thing has never been built all that well, let's face it. In fact, mine already had to go back to Nintendo once because it had the screen lift issue where the screen itself was actually coming unglued from the system. So, and they never even fully fixed that. It still sits a little higher than the plastic around it. Um, the Switch Lite doesn't seem to have those kinds of issues, at least from what I'm seeing so far. It's very well put together and quite solid. Um, lighter than the original Switch, but definitely has a more durable feel. So anyway, that's my unboxing and impressions of the Switch Lite. I, I do recommend it if you are looking for a handheld version of the Switch or just the most powerful handheld ever made, but I just hope that Nintendo does continue to revise it and come out with something a little bit smaller and maybe even with a clamshell design. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.